Welcome to this short video about the USDA National Institute of Food and Agriculture's AFRI program A1712. The focus of this program is rapid response to extreme weather events across food and agriculture. In this video, we will highlight information about the AFRI Rapid Response to Extreme Weather Program's Standard and Strengthening Standard, or FAES, grant types. We also encourage applicants to view our other videos about this AFRI program and to check out our webpage, fact sheets, and frequently asked questions. In this video, we'll provide more information about the Standard and Strengthening Standard, or FAES, grant types. To learn about the Coordinated Agricultural Project, or the CAP, we encourage applicants to watch our video on that topic. A standard grant supports targeted, original, scientific research, education, and extension, or projects that integrate any of these components. It is one of the five main categories of grant types across AFRI. Food and Agricultural Science Enhancement Grants, also known as FAES, strengthen science capabilities in research, education, and or extension programs. FAES grants are designed to help institutions develop competitive projects and to attract new scientists and educators into careers in high priority areas of national need in agriculture, food, and environmental sciences. FAES grants provide support for pre- and postdoctoral fellowships, new investigators, and strengthening grants, which is a grant type for this AFRI Rapid Response to Extreme Weather Program. The strengthening grant is one type of phase grant. A strengthening grant is expected to enhance institutional capacity with the goal of leading to future funding in the project area, as well as strengthen the competitiveness of the investigator's research, education, and or extension activities. The work proposed for strengthening grants must address specific program area priorities described under program area descriptions in the AFRI RFA. All applications submitted for strengthening grants must fulfill the eligibility requirements. In this video, we will only focus on specific parts of the AFRI RFA. Those sections are denoted with an asterisk. However, we strongly encourage applicants to familiarize themselves with the contents in the entire AFRI RFA. The RFA is organized in the following sections. Executive summary, updates, table of contents, and table of tables. Part one, funding opportunity description. Part two, award information. Part three, eligibility information. Part four, application and submission. Part five, application review requirements. Part six, award administration. Part seven, other information. And finally, appendices. In part one of the AFRI RFA, applicants will find information about the rapid response to extreme weather programs standard and strengthening standard or phase grant types. This information includes the funding amount, the number of awards, the duration of the award, the project type, and the application deadline. We anticipate awarding up to $300,000 per project, which includes indirect costs in numerous awards for project periods of 12 months. For standard and strengthening standard grants, eligible project types include extension projects or integrated research and extension projects. Applications will be accepted on a continuous basis and are dependent on real-time extreme weather events and disasters. Applicants must first submit a letter of intent within 14 calendar days of the weather event or disaster. A response decision will be provided by NIFA within 14 calendar days. If invited to submit a full proposal, applicants will have an additional 21 calendar days to submit their application materials. Innovative extension and applied research efforts are needed to alleviate the impacts of these disasters across the food and agricultural system. These strategies should help buffer effects from disasters and ensure the availability of an accessible, safe, nutritious, affordable, and abundant food supply. 
Funded projects are expected to provide solutions that may include trainings, communication strategies, tools and technologies, food supply logistics, and climate smart practices that can be rapidly adopted by various end users, as well as explain how adoption potential of proposed solutions will be measured. Proposals are encouraged to integrate youth and adult volunteer development aspects by leveraging existing extension networks and outreach programs, including 4-H and positive youth development efforts. There must be a high likelihood that results of the proposed project will be immediately deployed. Applications must address one or more of the following emphasis areas, agroecosystem resilience, agricultural commodity and nutrition security, health, well-being, and safety. We encourage proposals that support or add value to existing educational materials regarding disasters and naturally occurring hazards. And we encourage applicants to collaborate with the Extension Disaster Education Network, also known as EDEN, to ensure efforts are not duplicated. All submissions must directly address effects associated with an extreme weather event or disaster. The National Weather Service, local or state farm service agency, state or federal emergency management agency, or even local partners may have information and or data to justify a direct need for rapid response activities. It is the applicant's responsibility to monitor conditions, identify the extreme weather event or disaster, and explain its impacts. USDA NIFA will not monitor extreme weather events and disasters, and we will not announce an open call for letter of intent submissions. Rather, letters of intent and subsequently proposals will be accepted on a continuous basis. Applicants applying to this program should also consider focusing on projects based on species and commodities that are important to historically underserved farmers and ranchers or to small or medium-sized farms and ranches. Applicants must carefully assess their proposed project to ensure that there will be a high likelihood that results of the project will be immediately deployed. And finally, we encourage applications from and collaborations with minority-serving minority institutions, small to mid-sized institutions, and or institutions within EPSCOR states. For information about the purpose of the AFRI Rapid Response to Extreme Weather Program, we encourage applicants to view our other videos about this program and to check out our webpage, fact sheets, and frequently asked questions. We strongly encourage applicants to familiarize themselves with the information presented in the AFRI RFA regarding eligibility. Applicants must meet all the requirements discussed in the AFRI RFA. Eligible applicants for single function extension projects include state agricultural experiment stations, colleges and universities, including junior colleges offering associate degrees or higher, university research foundations, other research institutions and organizations, federal agencies, national laboratories, private organizations or corporations, individuals who are US citizens, nationals or permanent residents, and any group consisting of two or more entities identified in the list A through H. Eligible applicants for integrated projects, extension and research include colleges and universities, 1994 land grant institutions, and Hispanic serving agricultural colleges and universities. For further clarity on the terms college and university, applicants are encouraged to review part three, section A of the AFRI RFA. Applicants must respond to the program area priorities and deadlines found in part one, section C of the RFA. Grant recipients may subcontract to organizations not eligible to, to apply, provided such organizations are necessary for the conduct of the research project. Failure to meet an eligibility criterion by the application deadline may result in an application being excluded from consideration or, even though an application may be reviewed, will preclude NIFA from making an award. We encourage potential applicants to review Part 3, Section B of the AFRI RFA. For standard and strengthening standard grants, a letter of intent, also known as an LOI, must be submitted within 14 calendar days after an extreme weather event or disaster. It is the applicant's responsibility to monitor conditions, identify the extreme weather event or disaster, and explain its impacts. 
USDA NIFA will not monitor extreme weather events or disasters or announce an open call for letter of intent submissions. Rather, letters of intent and subsequently proposals will be accepted on a continuous basis. Letters of intent must follow the instructions in part four section A of the RFA. Letters of intent will be reviewed by scientific program staff in order to plan for appropriate expertise for the peer review and to ensure that the proposed project fits appropriately within the priorities of the Rapid Response to Extreme Weather Program. Letters of intent must be emailed to afri-rapidresponse at usda.gov. The program team will send confirmation emails that letters of intent have been received. Applicants must take note of the application process and prepare their applications to be in line with NIFA submission requirements as listed in Part 3 of the AFRI RFA. The project narrative for the standard and strengthening standard application must not exceed a total of seven pages. The application must be submitted within 21 days upon invitation from NIFA. With the, pro with the project narrative, applicants must provide a justification of how the project addresses a critical and urgent stakeholder need. For an integrated or extension and research application, applicants are encouraged to refer to the specific eligibility and content requirements in Part 3, Section A of the AFRI RFA. Applicants must ensure their applications meet all other requirements in Part 4 of the RFA. Applications for the Standard and Strengthening Standard or Phase Grants for the AFRI Rapid Response to Extreme Weather Program will go through four steps in the review process. First, a letter of intent will be assigned for review to at least three NIFA staff members. Letters of intent will be reviewed by scientific program staff in order to plan for appropriate expertise for the peer review panel and to ensure that the proposed project fits appropriately within the priorities of the program. NIFA will provide a response decision within 14 calendar days after submission. An invited proposal will be assigned for review to three reviewers with expertise in the proposed topic. Then, reviewers will produce individual reviews of the proposal evaluating the strengths and weaknesses. And finally, these written reviews are used to determine an award decision. Here is the general timeline for the standard and strengthening standard grants for the AFRI Rapid Response to Extreme Weather Program. Rapidly responding to extreme weather events and disasters is a core focus of this AFRI program, and the review timeline reflects NIFA's commitment to rapid response activities. Upon an extreme weather event or disaster, an applicant will prepare a letter of intent within 14 calendar days of the incident. Letters of intent will be accepted on a continuous basis. Upon receiving the letter of intent, NIFA manages its review. Following the letter of intent review, NIFA provides a response decision to the applicant within 14 calendar days after submission. Upon invitation, the applicant then prepares and submits a proposal. The, applic the applicant will have 21 calendar days to submit their proposal. Once received, NIFA manages the peer review process of the proposal, which will take no more than 14 days. And finally, over the course of no less than seven days, the funding notification is made and the award is finalized and made. This is a general timeline. We will keep applicants updated as much as possible, but we do appreciate your patience in this process. This concludes this video about the AFRI Rapid Response to Extreme Weather Programs Standard and Strengthening Standard or Phase Grant Types. We also encourage applicants to view our other videos about this AFRI program and to check out our webpage, fact sheets, and frequently asked questions. Thank you.